So the other day, when I was preparing this talk, I was looking for some images of, uh, of classrooms. Why of classrooms? Because this talk is about educational platforms. And still, the bigger part of education happens in a classroom. And since I wanted to provide uh, unbiased view on the topic I'm going to cover, I wanted to do some research. So I asked some of my professors to send me pictures of what the ideal classroom for them would be. The first answer I received was this one. Maybe one a little too far in school. But you can still recognize many elements that are current in today's, in, in, in today's classroom. You can probably recognize yourself. Maybe you were one of the guys sitting in the front, being very attentive, taking every word of the professor, or you see underlining every word on the book that the professor is saying. Maybe you were a little more relaxed, like with a couple of words in one another or just not really caring about what is going on in the class sitting in the bedroom. So this was very interesting, and actually, incidentally, we figured out that even in the Middle Ages, they had smartphones. My second professor was a literature professor. And I sent me this. This is the classroom where Shakespeare was taught education. Still, not exactly what I was looking for, but very much in the same model of the previous one. The next professor was a physics professor, and he gave me a picture of MIT, 1967. That's a physics lesson, of course. Same model, and if you, com but if you compare this class to a picture taken in the same class last year, can you actually spot any differences? What is different here? Well, you have a few more blackboards. I see also this room is very quite, quite, quite a number. People are dressed differently. But the real model of education, teaching the, the professor at the whiteboard and all the students passively writing and then restarting at home or in the class has not changed. What does this tell us? Well, first off, the model for sure has some value because otherwise, with the many things that change in these centuries, uh, this would have changed also, probably. But in the last decade or so, something happened which revolutionized many sectors of the economy where we thought no innovation was possible. And what is this innovation? The net. The possibility of having humans on every corner of the planet connected at an instant time Devices in your pockets, supercomputers in your pockets, I would say. Sensors in your home. Everything connected. I could pick up my phone and turn off the light of a person that lives in Utah. I don't know why I would want to do that, but I can do that. And so, maybe, maybe we can try to add these little bit of things that were never possible in the history of humanity until now into that mode. But back to business. Let me talk a little bit about myself. I was a student myself, as you can imagine or guess. And in particular, I was a physics student. And I was very terrible at taking notes and remembering what was to be done for an exam. I don't know how many people here are or have been university students. By show of hands. That, that's a nice number. And I don't know if you, like me, have ever experienced the frustration of having an exam, maybe in a couple of weeks, and spending more time figuring out what exactly is needed to be done for that exam, or how exactly to study it, than to actually study and do the work for the exam itself. I was, on the average of the class, absolutely the worst in this particular case. Fortunately, I had very good friends. I could exchange notes with. We could work together and make things work. And yeah, we, we had a few communication tools, but they did not quite cut it. I mean, honestly, Facebook group. And it's okay for a notification saying, okay, this class is not going to be to happen at that time, at that moment. Facebook, Facebook group. I had to fix this problem. And I would have done what 
probably <coughs> most of you would have done as pre-software developers, or maybe even have even done because I've seen similar experiments in uh, in other universities, in other places. Say, well, let's make a wiki, let's publish it on this Facebook group, and ask people, hey, look, this is a cool shiny new website. Let's let's put all the information there. I built it, and well, it actually worked. That was nice. There were people, I'm sorry, the, the screen is a little cut because of the project. Um, it actually worked. We, we had people writing down for, it. they were the first ones to do a certain kind of exam. They were writing down what kind of questions were more likely, how to organize, on which books to study, the best chapters, so on and so forth. And this knowledge could be passed on to the new generation. It was very, very nice. But we did not realize the power of using a wiki in a classroom until we had this course, Advanced Calculus. And I'm taking exactly a screenshot of that course at the time. And why is it that so? It is so because, unfortunately, the exercises that the professor was asking us to solve were so complex that not even the assistant professor, who was the one supposed to teach us how to solve the exercises, was able to solve them. But we had to pass the exam one way or the other. So how could you do? Well, luckily, we were, we were good enough students. So we sat down, we went to the library, we, we, we went read books, we made uh, our studies. And we came up with, if not really a manual, but at least a guide on how to solve the most common type of exercises that the professor was giving, was giving us. And of course, since we already had a wiki, it was a natural solution for us to simply write about that in the wiki. It was already accessible. People were already used to go there to look for information. And it actually worked very well. And not only for us, as we concentrate maybe on some parts more, some parts less, and add at the end a nicely produced document that we could print out and on which we could study but also for all our classmates who were just studying and then using our work to prepare their exams. We pass with a great rate of success. So what you do, the experiment goes well, you repeat it. You repeat it for the next course. It's the most natural thing to do. You find a good method of studying and you apply it again to the next courses. And so you write, you write, you write many books. We found each other at the end of our three years with more than 2,000 pages of high-quality scientific content of very, very specialized topics because it's the bachelor degree of physics and math in 15 su subjects, or as we like to call it, remixable books. Why do I say remixable? This is very important in our philosophy because the book is not something static. We don't give you an index and every Every chapter, is, uh, every page is a chapter of this book, and this is the index, and you cannot change it. You can compose your own book based on your need. You can take pages from the original content. You can borrow others from other courses if you need, for example, to revise some concepts of other courses, and you assemble the book as you want. And the other thing that Mason does realize what we have was the fact that the content produced was extremely high quality. And how do I know it's high quality? Well, besides the fact that I passed the exam with it, so at least some quality it needs to be happy. It was the fact that looking in the logs of our wiki, of our, our very private wiki that we had for internal usage, for the physicists and mathematicians of the University of Milano Bicocca, well, we started to have visits from all around Italy. Why, why the hell does a guy from Bari or from Rome come to a private wiki of the Milano University and download the book? And we realized he was doing it because this guy, written for internal purposes on a course of the University of Milano Bicocca, provided a lot of value to these other students. That's when we had the idea. <coughs> the idea that maybe we can kill textbooks. Can we actually do it? Can we revert the pyramid? Where there is one source of all truth, a book maybe written in the 50s, which contains the real math, 
and then it's delivered to the professors and it's delivered to the research and the students on the base that absorb what is given from the pyramid. Can we revert and expand the centralization model <coughs> and build networks out of it? Networks of people that share knowledge and improve on it and see what are the rough edges of the text that was written 50 years ago. And maybe they don't revolutionize it because it was a work of art written by uh, uh, an excellent professor, but still they, they refine it. They find useful add-ons that maybe are more relevant nowadays or just order better. The question is yes. But the real question would be, how do we do that? Well, we have three ingredients. Three absolutely essential ingredients that we have to add to the mixture. The first one is technology, of course. Because without a technology that provides you a way to easily collaborate on text, well, then you'd just be better, you, you'd be better off with paper and pen by thousands of hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people have always done from the Middle Ages until now. Then, of course, you need the collaboration method. Because if you use a MOOC such as Moodle, for example, well, yes, of course, you're, you're digital, you're using a great technology to see the slides that the professor has projected. So you're not really doing anything, you're not really collaborating. If you see a PDF, okay, you can print it out, but is it PDF printed out really different from a standard textbook? From a standard textbook? Is it really innovative? And of course, we need to bring students, students and academia right in the middle of it. And importantly, we need to connect these three essential ingredients. As Paul Axtam, in his preface of the book Electromagnetism, wrote, learning and doing physics as a social component. And of course, this was before Facebook was invented, so social actually had a meaning, a different meaning, so to say, at least. And of course, it doesn't apply just to physics, but it applies to most subjects. This is a global challenge, really. It's not something that just a handful of students can tackle and bring on their shoulders. And this is why we ask the support of a great international community that does open source and open source programs and open source content and believes in what we believe. And that is KDE. KD granted us the incubation status, and we officially became their first incubated project, and now we are proudly a member of the KD community. But the big question, this is especially for all of you here who may be working in academia or are professors, or actually teach as a job, or would like to teach as a job. Does this method actually work? I mean, it worked for me, or at least I hope you trust me when I say it was actually very successful in my class. But I'm not a statistically relevant sample of the human population. Not yet. So, does it really work? Well, we made some research and we found that there were other pedagogical tools that put a focus on collaboration. They are different in a sense that they are very local experiments. For example, the one that I'm showing you on the homepage of is uh, a method where they take people from they take students from high school, they divide the class into three, four groups, and they have them write their own book. They use a variety of sources, online and offline. They compose an ebook that they distribute to the rest of the class for learning. And they found out that this method is extremely efficient. Now, I will not go into the whole details of the um, of the paper, I'm sorry. This is the live web page, so if you press page down, of course, it goes to page now. For real? Yeah. So, it was uh, validated from the university, the Bocconi University, which is probably the main one for uh, economical studies in uh, in Italy. You can go and read the research if you are interested in the details. So at this point we have an idea. We have, and it is validated, it is validated by independent studies. We've seen it working for ourselves. Well, let's start to apply. That's where at least where the first problem started. 
because as I said you in the beginning, we had produced all the material while studying, and then we formulated the idea, but all of the initial team had just graduated. And so there were no one left working on the idea itself. We had great idea on paper, but no real people to implement it. So we had to wait for the next generation of students to actually start it up. And this happened last summer. Last summer, when a friend of mine, who was, who is, um, who is also volunteering as student representative with me, and happens to be a very great sysadmin, system administrator, Luca, came to me and said, you know, Ricardo, I really like this idea, the things that you were doing. We were actually using it also ourselves. Why don't we think of energy? Why, why we're not, we don't continue? Why do we don't actually make this, this global idea real? And so I said, sure, why not? I was about to start my master's degree, and I was, I was a colleague, I would have plenty of time. So I said, hey, uh, let's go ahead. We asked for a talk in at the KD General KD Conference Academy, and we restarted work. We gathered some other, we spent the first month looking for people that would believe also in the week to their project. And we locked ourselves in a house in the middle of the house. It was a very beautiful scenery. Unfortunately, we didn't see much of it. And we made the project be reborn. We redesigned a project, a website, which was only really meant for local usage, we redesigned it for a global adventure. And after these four days, working day and night, we turn was really born. It was in the last days of September 2015. How did it go after? Well, not bad, I guess. Now, after five months of the project, there is ten times more contributors. It's, we started to go to people, go to academia, go to classes, tell people about it. Involve the people that are already doing this work. Because if you go in a class of students that are already taking notes and are already refining them and, and sometimes collaborating and you give them a way to do it easier, they will do it. They will be very happy. And they will be very happy to actually then print it out and to share with other people, share it with, with other students and other professors from other universities, cooperate together. And this shows in this graph. This is, this is really what the only thing that we've been doing. And while we were building the community, like uh, open source projects, we went to institutions to talk to them, to existing educational institutions. And they saw what we were doing, and they appreciated it so much that many of them gave us our their official sponsorship. And they even started asking professors and students of their universities to write notes together. These are all the, these are all the institutions from which we have received contributions. It, then the level of involvement depends on the institution itself, as you can imagine. But these are where people are coming from that are supporting us. And more. The next semester, we are starting in four educational institutions. This experimentation that I was telling you about. So they are going to present Wiki to Learn to their professors and students. And for a few courses, a few selected courses, they're saying, use Wiki to Learn with the book and produce free content for that book. And all this content will be published under Creative Commons by attribution license. So it's a great amount of free content of extremely high quality that is going to be created for the work. And this is already decided for next semester. And our personal target for 2016, <coughs> that we're really confident we can hit, is to have 25 institutions not courses, institutions that participate to Wiki to Learn. Wrapping up. In five months' time, we started out as two students executing an idea on paper that was created through the years of studying. And 
we build a community, of course, on that. There's no way to students anymore. But we created thousands and thousands of pages of very high quality content. We received the attention of some of the main academical institutions. You might have noticed they are mostly scientific, for now and mostly about physics, but this is only because this is where the original community came from. It came from math and physics and computer science. But we have absolute intention to go, our, to go, to go, to do more. Already, the University of Milano Bicocca and the University of Pisa, who are officially in the Wikitron project, they're contributing to the Wikitron project, a very broad university with humanities, with economics, with medicine. And in general, we have built all of what I've shown to you. So now my question, and the question I want to leave you with today, is by harnessing the power of the network, by harnessing the speed of communication and the local hubs that we can build with this great tool called the internet. Can we do more? Thank you very much. Does anybody have questions? I might have missed it, but uh, does this <coughs> not only contain the core? I think so, it's core. Okay, I might have missed this. Does, does it not only contain the real of the data, just the text, but also the learning methods or strategies itself? It's, it's, what do you mean, like? Uh, uh, just the uh, strategies on how to learn it, uh, methods to take in the data. All right. Uh, so the focus is mostly on the textbook itself. Uh, the approach that we took for now is to keep these extremely open as in uh, we allow several versions of chapters and we have all the possibility to have users write their own personal pages and their courses pages. Uh, we do not want to, we don't have, so in this way, yes, it's possible to do it. Uh, no, we don't have a lot of it right now. We have external references where we suggest some text for some courses and where we say, for example, these chapters are very well kept and you should first study this and that. But let's say it's a, it's, it's a work in progress. So yes, some, some, some things that are going to be there is not going to be our core. Core is on the content. The idea is that students get credit for contributing to a collaboratively generated textbook. Then does that and not mean that the first generation has a lot more work than the subsequent one? How do you address that? These are very this is a very interesting question. Uh, we've been giving it uh, uh, some thought, and uh, the reply is that uh, we've seen that for the first, actually not just the first one, but the first two, three generations, there is a lot of work because there is a lot to refine. For the following generation, this is a question we really have to uh, address with the universities. And we have to experiment and see exactly what works, how it works, and the metrics with it. So it's a complex job, but it's, it needs to be developed. Uh, uh, of course, there exists a possibility to redo uh, for a particular course on the personal pages, uh, uh, your own new version. Uh, but I, I think it's a little pointless at that point. But it's, uh, it's something we have to figure out uh, with the people that are doing the work themselves. OK? <coughs> I, will just, I will just repeat the question. Yes. Uh, there's, uh, there are other projects in similar material, for example, uh, Wikibooks from, uh, operated by Wikimedia Foundation. Is there some uh, collaboration between uh, Wikipedia and uh, some other projects? No. Uh, there is. There is on, uh, especially on technical level. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I will repeat the question. The question is about uh, collaboration, if there is some collaboration with our similar projects, such as uh, Wikibooks. I keep it like this. Uh, such as uh, Wikibooks uh, or other Wikimedia projects. And my answer to this is that indeed there is uh, collaboration, especially at a technical level, since we share the MediaWiki. The reason for doing uh, MediaWiki code, and we share extension all of our codes, of course, open source, uh, the reason why we are building something different, there are two main reasons for this. The first one is the software. Our software needs to be, uh, so. When we started Wikitutor, we wanted something on which to really study on. 
So we wanted, for example, to have all the content there directly printable in an efficient way and on a way that we, we could go and do real studying. And I'm not entirely convinced we can do it just with a web interface. And even then, MediaWiki can be tweaked a lot, but the standards installations that Wikimedia Foundation offer, for example, are really more for an encyclopedia than for a textbook, collaborative text, textbook project. Uh, the other is more about how we organize content, as in we want to give the user the freedom to reorganize the book as he wants it. Probably every professor of every university, when they, when they in, my, in my vision, let's say, use Wiki to learn as their source of content for the textbooks for the class, they will want to check it and just take the parts that are necessary to them. So they, on Wiki to learn, they're able to, to do that, to create a collection of the book and to, um, and to save it and publish on the personal page so that his students can go just to his page and download already the collection. But of content that is shared globally. Uh, other, other, of course, uh, uh, in the local, for example, Wikimedia Italy supports us and we have other, uh, a, a lot of other uh, collaboration. We, we were open to that kind of collaboration with similar projects that share the same goal that the NASA. It's just, uh, we, we have a, a particular focus and we want to concentrate on that. Did I answer it? Uh, you said that you created a lot of high quality content when you were using it for yourself. And how are you trying to maintain that throughout the projects? For example, um, I agree that if you collaborate, collaborative minds know more than just one person. But sometimes an authoritative person can say, like, mm -hmm. well, this is just not true what you wrote. So how are you going to tackle that? So, uh, this, this is a very important question, it's especially, this is the first question that when I go to institutions and speak <coughs> about the project, it's the first question that they ask. There is a rating system that they are developing with their help, and that already gives an idea of whether a professor has approved a certain version or not. Uh, we are going to set up a, a, an editorial review board that will give suggestions and will check on the quality of the content without blocking in any way the, the open source uh, contributions, but just uh, <coughs> any. And there exists the possibility for the professor to review a certain version, mark it as reviewed, and then, only, and then select it for, so that the user can choose, for example, okay, I want the lastest version ever, which might contain some errors, or I want the last, the last version that was checked by a professor. So this is absolutely crucial, of course, the quality of the content is, uh, Any other questions from the audience? What language is it? Is it only Italian, only no. English? Uh, so there are many portals. The, there is a wiki family, so we actually separated the Italian, the English uh, part from also the... Um, we, we also have our own version of Wikimedia Commons as the place where you can upload your images and they're shared uh, on, all the, on all the wikis. Uh, the development and so now there are two portals which are open uh, the Italian and the English one then are coming up the Spanish and the German one where there is a community already forming especially in the Spanish one should be the, the next one to be open for now the Italian one is uh, for obvious reasons for historical reasons is the one which is most complete but I expect in a few months that the English one will surpass it and of course, all the developments and uh, we, we, uh, all the core activities are in English only. There is meta.wikipedia.org where we keep all the information about communication channels, telegram, message, telegram uh, channels that we use as chats, court <coughs> mailing list, uh, and information in general. So that all this part is in English. So, so we have half a minute left, so very quick question. Thank you very much.